I think it's easy to fall for that scam because it was a very very good scam his baby mother was telling her he's a great guy and then and then at the end to find out that the baby mama was also a victim this guy was selling good good quality dreams first of all i don't believe in borrowing my money i just don't if your life is in danger call your mother she gave birth to you call your father Hey beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. I'm Amy Justin Me. We are looking good and we are feeling good. Coming to you guys from the motherland. I am in Nigeria. So if you see a girl sweating <laughs> in this video, just know it's hot out here and I've had to turn the fan off um, so that it's not getting in the way. I do have some air con, but whew, my god, it's hot. Uh, it's been a little while. I feel like every time it's been a little while, I come and apologize. I just think we just have to, you know, just accept the fact that your good sis isn't like a regular vlogger or blogger anymore. Like, the full time job is a lot. <laughs> and then obviously, I lost my granddad. And I just like to say thank you guys for all your well wishes, your support. I've had time, it's been awesome just being here, being surrounded by family. And in the spirit of Valentine's Day, I thought I would come to you guys today to talk about love specifically. You, you'd have to have been living under a tree to not have heard about the Tinder Swindler. Like you would literally have to be living under a tree, a rock, a mountain because the memes, the commentaries <laughs> about, what's his name, Simon Levive? Wow, it's a lot. Actually, I'm gonna get my phone because it's only Simon the Vibes name that I know, but I'm gonna be referencing um, the women that he scammed. So I need to get up to date with their different names as well. But oh my god, like I'd seen before I even watched it, you guys kept telling me, like sending me messages, have you seen it? Have you seen it? You need to watch it. And I finally watched it and I was like, yeah, but like some girl got swindled out of some money you know on tinder throw a guy she met on tinder big deal come and see i'm watching it and like the way my jaw just kept dropping and dropping the more convoluted and crazy the story got i i still can't believe it send me two million guys send me two million my enemies are coming after me you know i'm not safe that's why i run to nigeria i'm not safe i need to get back home to the uk somebody quickly i dropped my bank account send me to wow the audacity i'm gonna start with the man simon levi whatever his bloody name is the audacity of this man I can't believe it. And I know a lot of people are like, yeah, those women are gold diggers. Um, yeah, they just waste his money. I would never fall for that. It's ridiculous. I have had a lot of time. I've thought about this like quite a, a while this last week. Thought about it a lot. And honestly, I think, I don't think I would, I don't know. At least I don't know. I think it's easy to fall for that scam because it was a very very good scam simon like he sold these women dreams like you know somebody will tell you like oh i'm a doctor i'm a banker you da, 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 da. and like you just have to kind of take their word for it you know he told these women i'm a successful diamond da, 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 da. and they didn't have to take his word for it my guy had you know put in backstories there were newspaper articles of him you know in that company in that diamond world that he would send to the women you know he'd photoshopped himself into pictures of you know the family he was referencing he had private jets luxurious hotels like i really don't think there's any of us that would have gone out on a date with this simon guy and have been thinking there were red flags definitely but that he didn't have the money he said he had um no that did that wouldn't have occurred i don't think to me i don't think it would have occurred to most of us you just don't see the average person flying around the jet setting in a private jet you know without having you know money and means you, you just don't see it so like me the the first date so i remember let me check her name i got it so the main lady that this Simon guy swindled was a lady called Cecile. I think she was from Denmark. Um, like, I'm not going to be straight on all the facts. Feel free to correct me in the description box and feel free to, like, share your thoughts on this <laughs> because I just, I'm still astounded. Like, he swindled this Cecile woman 
for $250,000 and it's not like she's like rich or from like a like she doesn't she's not rich she's like a relatively su successful career woman working in London you know and you know you would think from the sounds of her on the documentary she sounded very smart you know, when I first started watching I was just like oh my god like I can relate to this woman like the first 10 minutes when she was talking about you know she loves dating there's nothing as exciting how many matches she's had on tinder you know she just wants to find love I was like oh my god I love her I can relate to her like an hour into it I'm like are you mad are you a crazy individual like what are you doing so just start from the top the dream that this man saw this woman he took her on their very first date they met on tinder obviously he took Cecile on the very first date to uh I think it was Paris he flew her on the flight private jets to Paris she met parts of his team people that he worked with in his diamond company she met his son apparently the mother of his child like come on which one of us walking into that situation you know would not believe the truth like for me I feel like it's very important when I meet a guy online and we start dating that I meet his friends and his family like I feel like that starts to be the easiest way to tell what this person is about seeing the people in their life you know that you can cross reference some of the things they've been telling you against and to hear that his baby mother was telling her he's a great guy and then and then at the end to find out that the baby mama was also a victim who he had swindled and she had you know actually confessed in court testified against him and then she came with her chest to help him swindle other women i'm telling you like this story just mad doesn't make any sense but the the back story and the effort the man has put into this con this lie was astoundingly good like he had the money being spent he had the lavish lifestyle he had the clothes you know he had the the newspaper articles the photoshopped pictures he had the instagram to back it up like no there were not loopholes in this man's game let's be real it was a fucking good con good con but let's get into cecile okay so this man was selling her dreams and she was buying it and i get it she's 29 she's probably had some you know not so great relationships and experiences with online dating in the past like a lot of us have and then you meet this guy who's not just successful in life but is also good looking and he is telling you everything you want to hear he's like from the messages what she was saying he would wake up every morning text her good morning my love i love you i miss you i can see you being the mother of my children like this man was giving her everything that she wanted on a platter and then on top of that you add flying her you know to paris in that lavish lifestyle when he said to her you know i want to live together um the budget for you to go and find us an apartment is fifteen thousand a month it's just the icing on the cake she was hooked she saw the dream life she'd always wanted and she saw the perfect man who was treating her it's the kind of man that you would brag on to all your friends like oh my god i met this great guy he's good looking you know he's emotionally available you know we connect he tells me how much he loves me and cares about me he treats Oh, it was a good con. It wasn't just that, you know, she saw money and her eyes opened. Like, this guy was emotionally giving her all the kind of stuff that women want to hear. So I get it. I get how she fell for him. I get how, like, she cared about him, you know, so fast. Because it was only a month of them dating before he gave her the... Is it... What do they call it? The... Switch and bait, I don't even remember what that term is called in the con world, um, where he gave, started giving her the sob story of, you know, I have enemies, it's a dangerous world I'm in, and giving her, he was laying the foundation, you know, for the con that he was running. And I get it, if you think you care about this person, you love them, it's going to come as a shock to you, and it's going to be a bit alarming to hear that their life is in danger his enemies were out to get him his life was in danger this guy you know it wasn't even just a borrow me money because like you know 
I've lost access to my bank cards, my accounts are shut, I will, you know, obviously reimburse you, I'm a millionaire, like, you've got nothing to worry about, it was borrowing me money, because if you don't do it, somebody's gonna kill me, they're out to get me, I might lose my life, my bodyguard is being, you know, abused, the guy sent photos, do you know, they said that they haven't actually found any proof against the bodyguard that he was, um, part of the scam but he obviously was how was he like helping him doctor photos how was he helping him you know manage all these multiple women if he didn't he was in on it he was obviously in on it because all the women must have met this bodyguard he'd be knowing that this man is lying he must be hearing the phone conversations to them and what kind of a sociopath can actually keep all of these lies straight you have Cecile, you have um, Penilla, you have Eileen, like all these women in different countries and you have the time to be seeing each of them, you have the time to be messaging each of them, calling each of them, like these women f believed that they were in full on relationships with this man, like how is that possible? You know, how is he not mixing up his lies? Like this guy was good, none of these women had enough suspicion to check his phone none of these women were like this guy was selling good good quality dreams good quality dreams let us be honest most of us would buy it you know i honestly i believe i would have bought the dream but where i feel like nah dude you got the wrong one is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars had and cash that's i'm going to borrow man first of all i don't believe in borrowing my money i just don't like money i'm gifts and you know gifts is my love language like spending money on somebody i care about um that's nothing to me it's actually how i like to receive love and because that's how i like to receive love it's very natural that that's how i like to give love and in the past i've you know spoilt men lavish gifts you know holiday uh, i don't know okay, okay, i've never bought a holiday for a guy but I bought nice experiences. But the one that where I learned to never do that shit was I once bought a guy, um, a boyfriend and girlfriend. He was one of the. I used to say that he was the only guy I'd ever been in love with. Like it was years ago. Um, he was Welsh and he was actually a really really good guy. But I bought him a suit, like a really nice three piece suit, looking dapper. The man was gorgeous. And then when we broke up, come and see on his Facebook, he's wearing my beautiful suit to weddings with his ex-girlfriend. I say you have audacity. Men have audacity. And unless you are their fiance, he's your husband. I say my sister, don't be just giving money anyhow. You know, I hate to say it, but I nowadays I watch how a man spends on me before I spend anything on him. I'm really sorry, like I, I do now. And I've just learned that with experience because nothing hurts worse than a guy you've treated really well, done lots for, especially financially as a woman, you've done a lot for that man. And then when it ends, yeah, just watching them living their life, their best life without you, that, that'd be hurting my soul. So I really don't believe in spending money on men or giving men money. I like spending, I can spend money on a man, but I'm a niece that have seen some serious investment from him on me already. But the thing is, she had seen some serious investment on herself. Like he had flown her out, he'd taken her to nice dinners, like he had already lavished her and spent some money on her. But, I can probably lend a man, let's see, how much am I willing to give a man of my heart and a thousand pounds? I can. My, my boo, my boy says I'm in trouble, like I care about you, not after a month, Sha, let me tell you, not after a month, let's say six months, I'm loving you, you're loving me, you're treating me good, you know, I can probably like spare a thousand pounds. Anything above that, I feel like you've got a lot of audacity to be asking me. If your life is in danger, call your mother, she gave birth to you. Call your father, he, he, he you know, implanted the mother. Like, don't call me that you've been doing for a month and ask me for money. Like, he's a businessman. Are you telling me there's nobody in the business world, none of your financial, you know, investors or anything that could help you out it's your good sis Mimi you're asking 
for money. I think the first amount, I'm not sure, the first amount that she sent him was $30,000. Like, this guy actually told her, like, go and open an Amex card. So he knows she doesn't have the money. He's not even targeting, like, rich women. He's targeting women that don't have the money um, and he's telling them to go and take out loans and credit cards in their names to help him. And I'm, I think about it, why is he not targeting affluent women who can easily just send him money? The thing is, a lot of these affluent women are sceptical and I think they're, you know, they're, they're sceptical of being used for their money. They're sceptical of people just popping up and I also think that they're not a good mark because they're not going to be as impressed as a trip to Paris. That's like the everyday for them. Like they, these are the, these things are not going to make this woman think, yes, I'm so in love with you. You took me to Paris. You took me to a really nice hotel. She's like, that's a standard Friday every day. So he knows what he was doing, targeting women that didn't really have a lot of cash, selling them a dream, selling them a lifestyle that they could only have dreamed of in their wildest fantasies. And then convincing these women to take out loans in their name because his life was in danger. Let's just say I can forgive her stupidity for the first 30,000, but the remaining 220,000, your head is not correct. Your head is not correct, Cecile. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. At this point, this guy had her committing fraud, not just because she was taking out the money um, for him and lying for the purpose, the use of what she was going to use these loans for, but she was knowingly submitting forged documents. He got her to pretend that, you know, she was now an employee in his fictitious company, knowingly submitting forged documents about her earnings to these financial lenders, like, what are you doing? Approving transactions and lying to them over and over again. This woman took out nine, nine different loans. For a man, I just, I just can't, I just can't. And then a part of me thought, maybe it's the D. Maybe the D was just that good. And then there's Penilla. He never even slept with this one. Never even told this one he loved her, but he sold her the lifestyle. You know, Penilla was out there with him on holidays. He was footing the bill. He was giving her the same, I'm financially solvent, you know, story and lie he'd been giving to the others. But I was so shocked to see that this mum was able to scam, you know, an adult fully, like she's not, she's not any younger than 40. Like she's probably late 40s, like an adult grown, woman you know that you're not even having sex with you're not even giving d you're not even promising you're the kind of woman i will love and marry he managed to scam this one out of thirty thousand dollars as well i said wow this man is good he's got something going on <laughs> he's got something going on I, I, it was a story it just kept unfolding i was just like wow i'm shocked i'm shook i, I am not understanding what is this so anyway he scams Cecilia out of that, that, all that money. She's trying to get her money back. He's telling her I've sent you checks for half a million. You know, it should clear any day. Obviously, the checks never, never cleared. No money ever arrived. And she now goes to all these. And he starts getting angry with her, doesn't he? Like he's calling her, threatening her, her mum's. She goes, she blocks him, which, by the way, I'm sorry, I was watching that. Like, are you stupid? A man that owes me a quarter of a million dollars. I'm blocking him. God forbid, bad thing. By the time I figured out it's a, it's a con, by the time I realized that none of these checks are ever going to clear, this man is out there, like, you know, trying to ruin my life. Already, already, the there's something in me. I don't know if it's called the pettiness. It's not the pettiness because it's well deserved in this instance. I'm plotting. I'm scheming. I'm gonna get you back, boo. Like, even if I need to become one of those enemies that's out to get you, I will get my money. And she was just like, oh, I'm just gonna let the money go and I'm just gonna block him. I'm like, no, nah, serious. You're not serious. That's one thing I liked about the Eileen girl. You can see when she was being interviewed by Tinder, like, the pettiness level when she was describing <laughs> that she was selling all of his colognes you know, and you see all the messages he was sending her that he's now living in a hostel <laughs> she was loving it I'm like yes sis like I think she lent him a hundred and ten thousand dollars over the course of a year and a half so she was in it for a long time like I think this guy 
you know that was a very long con game it wasn't just like with Cecile where after a month she was asking her for money like this one it was a very long con I don't know how you know a year and a half like was she not worried that she didn't see any of her money back they didn't give us too much information about Eileen and that scam but she did say she'd given him 110,000 and you know when she realized she was the one who turned him into the authorities like I'm just like a go sis that's what I'm talking about she played it smart was it yeah it was her that turned him into the authorities I know Penilla tried to no Penilla went to the um Penilla went to the media and she was trying to help the media catch him but good old sis Eileen she turned him into the authorities she got his ass arrested but before she did she got thirty thousand dollars of her own money back she sold my guy's clothes his watches like I'm like yes and the fact that she was just getting joy and glee out of it like nah boo you trying to play me and he's sending out with these pictures like unshaved like I'm now living in a hostel I'm desperate <laughs> just like oh how the tables had turned like it was just such an outrageous and outlandish story and then the worst part of it is like he got arrested and he did five months of a 15 month um sentence back in israel which i think is where he's from but i don't think they have an extradition you know policy like he's free now my guy is still on instagram living a very lavish life has a very beautiful girlfriend i don't know what the scam is now maybe he got like a rich widower got into her will or something because now everybody knows who he is who the hell is he gonna con but he's living well i don't think he's gonna ever receive any charges against him as long as he stays in israel i don't think he can leave the country if he does like he risks being arrested and probably charges brought against him for all the fraud that he got these women to you know partake in but at the end because i was thinking like when cecile contacted Amex, contacted all the loans and said I'm really sorry for lying I've been scammed this is what I went through I was thinking are they gonna write off all that money for her and at the end in the swindler they're like yeah Cecile is still paying back these loans I said wow wow this woman is going to be paying back that money damn near for the rest of her life like she needs to be doing interviews i hope that tinder check was good because how can a man really ruin your life like that in in a space of a few months and this guy had no compassion like none at all when i saw the messages he was sending to eileen towards the end of the documentary asking eileen to sell her car asking eileen to sell her house so he can fund his lifestyle i'm just like you are really an evil demonic bastard like there's something wrong with you, you're a fucking sociopath, like, you have no empathy whatsoever. But it was outlandish, I think the con was a great con. This guy, seasoned professional, how he kept his lies straight, how he hooked these beautiful, smart women in, sold them a dream convincingly, showed them family and friends, like, so many elements to this lie wasn't just give me money it was my life is in danger and like with his chest you know like it was a good freaking con kudos to him like but nah it's not me it couldn't it couldn't a thousand pounds is the most he would have got out of me and if after that thousand pounds me once i found out it was all a lie it was all a game oh my god i've taken ten thousand from you Next time we meet each other, I will carry all of your watches, I will carry everything I can get my hands on, and I will run out in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know? I will run out in the middle of the night. What is block? What is block? When you owe me $250,000, what the hell is I'm blocking you? I'm not blocking you. You are going to hear from me every single day. Every day from a new number. You will not have peace. It's me. You want to scam? No, bruh. Like, it's a lot. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on the Tinder swindler. Do you think he had a good con? Do you think they were just gold diggers that were after a lavish lifestyle and that's why they got swindled? Like, let me know your thoughts. Have you ever been in that situation? Like, I've definitely fallen victim to men lying about who they are online. But yeah, I can't sit here and say I've never been, like, scammed or whatever I have been I'd say it's very difficult now to scam me very very fucking difficult I'm not entirely trusting of people anymore 
um, but I have in the past and I think if we're all honest with ourselves you know that's a good scam a lot of us would fall for that one me I'll fall for it small I probably have sent him maybe even two thousand maybe even two thousand pounds <laughs> I might have sent that man you know if he's like fly me jet setting maybe two thousand and saying all the right words promising marriage and whatnot Maybe two thousand I could have, I could have, you know. After that, I said sorry. You just the, the easiest thing to have done is just sorry. I applied. The bank refused to give me the credit card. It was declined. What you gonna do, boo? Then you see a man's true colors. Is he really here for me or is he here for money? Like, what's up? But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy Valentine's Day. Safe swiping you know get to know a man I know this is like a rare situation I do believe like the more you meet of somebody's friends and family the better you have an understanding of who they are some people's families and friends they're demons they could be lying to you too but in terms of fraud but I know friends and families that will be helping a man cheat on you you know so be careful when you're looking for love I think it's easy to fall prey to a man who's telling you the right things saying you the right things saying the right things to you just be a bit more objective be a bit more discerning and if you can get him to meet your friends because your friends are not going to have that love haze over them that they're, they're going to see who the person really is make sure you hit that subscribe button and give me a like before you go Mm. 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 Mm.